Hello and welcome to East Coast DNA's Power Hour. We're full tilt into festival season. We've been talking about Mike Fest 666 uh, coming up Labor Day weekend. But another Pictou County metal festival name that keeps popping up, uh, Mayhem Mountain, to be held in Blue Mountain in uh, just a few days uh, here in July. So we wanted to get some more information. Aaron M.F. Hayden, the festival organizer, stopped by with his associate Chris Tree. Uh, give us a rundown on the festival lineup and activities that will be available for everyone at the event. And then as an extra bonus for this episode, we have Evan Frizzle of Turbo. Uh, Turbo's a band that we've referenced a few times on the regular podcast. And now that we're back revisiting some of these heavier bands with the Power Hour episodes, Turbo is actually a band that's on both of those festival lineups. They will be performing here in Pictou County for Mayhem Mountain, and then they'll be revisiting back at the end of the summer with Mike Fest 666. Make sure to go out and get your tickets now. If you want tickets for Mayhem Mountain, we discuss it here in this episode. Reach out to a band member from the festival lineup, or you can reach out to Aaron M.F. Hayden directly. And for Mike Fest, we uh, had the details in previous episodes as well, but you can reach out to Mike Hatfield to get a weekend pass with the uh, camping included. And let's get into it now. Stay tuned. We have a musical treat from Turbo included in this episode as well. And another follow-up power episode is currently in the works, sitting here right now in my editing room. Aaron M.F. Hayden. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. So we have another Pecto County Metal Festival popping up. Yes. And we had a little brief chat before uh, we start recording here. Uh, there's a lot of parallels to our episodes that we had with Mike Fest. Yeah. It, it's funny that our circles haven't crossed before. Right. It sounds like a uh, history of Mike Hatfield and Jeff and myself and yeah. music in Pictou County. We well, probably you, were around at the same time. If you went shows. to the Trenton shows, you might even see me play music before. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. So why don't we start with that? We'll uh, definitely get into what's going on with the yeah. Mayhem Mountain. But I am curious, since we pulled on that thread a little bit already, yeah. uh, you're a Pictou County guy, born yeah. and raised? Born and raised, yeah. Left for a little bit. Like, yeah. Moved, lived in PEI, lived in Halifax and stuff, but always, always found my way back here. So the Trenton days that we refer to, some of the viewers might not be as familiar. It's something that we really focused on with the uh, Jam Sessions podcast. Yeah. And uh, we have a common thread that the Trenton Youth Center here in Pictou County used to hold all ages shows. Yeah. And that was like a kind of big music venue for people of a certain generation. There, and it's a wide generation. Yeah, like, really there was, was man. very young people and... I remember when I stopped going, I was like into 19, almost yeah. 20, and it was starting to fizzle a little bit, but there was still a scene that there were some big bands that came through there. Yeah, so man. yourself, what uh, like late 90s, early 2000s is probably that era. So what were you, were you in a specific band? Yeah, I was, man. I was uh, the front man of a band called The Wicker Casket. Okay. With uh, Mason Keed. Tim Henderson and Justin Johnson, but they call Justin Johnson Double J. And okay. I, we were like a melodic, groovy black metal band. Cool. I played synth and vocals. Awesome. Yeah. So did you guys have a lot of traction back then, or was it like around for like a year or two? Or? We were around for about a year or so. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate, man. Uh, someone heard us and wanted to sign us and record us. And the only thing they wanted was to see our live performance yeah. before they did it. And we were going to play this show that they were going to be at. And like hours before the show, the guitar player like sprained his oh, no. arm or something. And he was like, he can't play the show. And then after that, he left the band. And then we were a three-piece. And we just didn't have as much traction as a three-piece. And then we just kind of dis disbanded at that point. Yeah. So after that, did you continue 
playing in this area, or is that around the time you would have been? I moved did. Out of the area? Yeah, but it was almost always solos. Yeah, at yeah. At that point, like a couple years later, after that happened, I went a few years wanting to start another metal band, mm -hmm. and just I couldn't get people dedicated enough to sure. jam and play and write and all that stuff. So what I ended up doing was working with a producer and creating these electronic original tracks yeah. and do and, and getting booked for like electronic music festivals, playing these tracks and doing metal vocals over top of them. Oh, cool. It was like, if I couldn't get a band, I was going to, I was going to find something. Yeah. Is there any of that recorded? Oh yeah. 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 It's on SoundCloud. I've actually got a, a gig or two booked this summer. So I'm playing at Mayhem Mountain. Awesome. So, yeah. what what do you perform under for that? Do uh, you... Pilot the Sun. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've I've definitely seen the name around, yeah. and I, I'm sure that I've heard some of the music over I've the years too. I played it at so. Art at Night. The oh, last there you go. Years, yeah. So yeah. If you've heard someone screaming into a microphone. Yeah. At night, it's almost guaranteed it was me. Yeah, I I definitely caught you down there before. So, flashing forward to 2023, you have a metal festival. Is this something that you've done before? I'm not familiar with it in our region. But... Um, not the metal festival. Yep. But I hosted a festival called Mount Funky okay. for seven years in the same place that I'm doing Mayhem Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, I started that because I was going to all the different types of festivals, right? I'd, I'd go to a rock festival. I'd go to a, a heavy metal festival. I'd go to an electronic festival. And I was raised by a music teacher. So I have an appreciation for all music. Like, example, country music. So pe so many people are quick to say they don't like country music. Sure. Do I listen to a lot of country music? No. Are there a couple songs that are country that I consider bangers? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the reason why I started Mount Funky was because I wanted a, a venue and a music festival that wasn't just one type of music. So when I was doing Mount Funky... It didn't matter what kind of music you played, as long as you're good at it. So, so Mount Funky was this crazy variety. What, <clears> what the, uh, bands maybe would have played through there that uh, uh, some of our listeners would know? Uh, Stonehouse yeah. has played there. Uh, Hitman. A uh, bunch of DJs from around here. Uh, DJ T. Lee and Technicola. Uh, Buddha. So many DJs, so many DJs, and that's that's what uh, that was. That's what kind of led to Mayhem Mountain. Out of all the seven years that we did Mount Funky, and literally the hundreds of artists that came through there, mm -hmm. aside from myself, there might have been one heavy band. Oh yeah. And when that one heavy band played, it was such a big deal for me because yes, I love all music, but dude, I'm a metalhead. Yeah, you're just heart. getting back to that core, right? That you, yeah. And, Mount Funky ended in 2019. It just, yeah, we I, I just got tired of it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I miss the metal scene around here, dude. Mm -hmm. And I made a post on the Picto County Rant Rave a couple months ago, being like, "Does anyone remember?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, it's like 20 years ago. We do remember." And I was I was really surprised the amount of people that reacted and commented. Oh saying yeah, they remember and they miss it because I thought I was alone. Yeah, it definitely. When I started to doing this podcast with my brother, I was looking around for a few different genres because we were trying to expand to bands from all over the East Coast. Yeah. And I did for a while specifically look for like metal and harder stuff that, that I was pleasantly surprised at how many current bands yeah. there were. And then when I started digging in, I'm like, like some of these guys have been around for a while, like just right. given it. But I feel like all those lockdowns, a lot of people really tightened up. Right. And there's a lot of acts out there right now that are just doing amazing things. Yeah. So it's crazy. Like we had uh, Mike on to talk about Mike Fest, which like he has his annual birthday party. Yeah. So I mean, it's his six one, but it's full blown metal festival this year. Yeah. And then... We had interviews there where we talked about uh, the Gutter Fest that's coming in oh, Windsor as well. I never heard of that one. So th that's another one stacked lineup. Um, There's another one called uh, Merciless Metal Fest. Yes, yes, I know uh, of that one too. So, I mean, they're springing up everywhere. So the fan base is out there. Yeah. 
Oh, obviously. And it, it seems it seems like with a little help, the scene's coming back. So yeah. That's the goal, really. It's amazing. And now you also brought along your boss. Yeah, this is my boss. That's working on the festival with you here. Yeah, I could go. We could do a whole separate interview on him, man. Yeah. He's got like a cult following and stuff. So this is Chris Tree. And if you believe, belief in Chris Tree, then you believe in Christianity. I love it. Yeah, we could get all into that, but we'll say that for another time. But yeah, maybe we'll get uh, Chris someday when uh, he's a little bit more talkative. Yeah, sit there he's, and he's give pretty us stoned words. right now. But yeah, yeah, he's <clears> yeah. He's from my the boss, and he, uh, honest to God, man, when it comes to doing festivals and events and stuff, he's been the greatest promotional tool, the greatest business connection I ever made. Yeah, was through this thing. Very connected. Yeah, uh, one of the guys that helped start Evolve. Oh, really? He helped me with Mount Funky. Oh, there you and go. And the only reason why I know him is because I met him through Chris. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So who is on this lineup this year that you and Chris have put together? Um, well, our headliners elevate the virus, mm -hmm. which I am the most excited for because not only are they the most heavy, brutal band I've booked for an event, but honestly... They're probably the most heavy band that's been in Pictou County in like 17 years. Well, that's something to look out for, right? for sure. Yeah, and like it's the story of me booking them so funny. Because I was just so about, please, just get some heavy bands, just get some heavy bands. And people were applying, and I just took the word if they were heavy. Yeah, sure. Right? So when Elevate the Virus applied, I didn't even listen to them. Mm -hmm. I was just like, yes, you can play. We'll work it out. My girlfriend came home that night, and I was like, hey, let's listen to the band I just booked. Clicked on their link. First thing I noticed, they have music videos. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, they're next level. Okay. Yeah. And dude, the way I described it to them, when I first heard their music and their vocals and everything, I literally had a soundgasm. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and I was like, oh, dude. So that's our headliner. And then there's Hitman. Yeah. Uh... Turbo, only Vultures left. Who we just had on, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. That's wild. Uh, Backyard Action Heroes. Yes. Uh, Shadow of Everest. Yes. And Pilot the Sun. Awesome. I think That's I got awesome. everybody. I think. And so Pilot the Sun is yourself. Yeah. And do you have any backup people for instrumentation when you're performing live there? No. Or do you no I've always been open to the idea. Yeah. Because I like, I like theatrical performances and the more people doing stuff up there. Like, I love Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. Just because of, like, everybody doing stuff, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like, I've had performed with Pilot Sun with a DJ mm -hmm. mixing my stuff. I performed with uh, a guitar player yeah. that wrote guitar to go over it. Sure. And now, because the guitar player is not involved, we actually took him to the studio and recorded his guitar cool, yeah. and put it into the mix. So even though he's not there, yeah. you can still hear the guitar. Yeah, I see a lot of that happening too. People actually recording the instrumentation yeah. to make their own samples and incorporate it into the mix so that they, they don't need to drag that person with them right? all the time. Because there's a lot of musicians that do that too. For like That's how they make their bread and butter. And honestly, just, just for practice, I might play a little bit of my new act. Cool. At Mayhem Mountain, just just get some practice because, like I said earlier, I was, I'm booked with that one mm -hmm. for two future events, and they're my first ones doing this act. So, and is that under a different name then? Yeah, Doctor Didgeridoo. Cool. Yeah, I'm playing the Didgeridoo, a synth, and making beats with the synth at the same time. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And um, well, yeah, where are those dates? Oh, uh, so Raven City is in Hopewell, and mm -hmm. it's. On the weekend of August 18th. Okay. And I might be booked for Trifecta, which is like an exclusive party in Cape Breton. And that's the same weekend. So is it, we'll uh, have to keep an eye out for your name to pop yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. See, see where we can catch you there. Yeah, watch for the didgeri Dr. Didgeridoo. <laughs> and your metal festival, it's in Blue Mountain? Yes. So, for anyone that was looking for that area, I not everyone on, that watches our show is actually too familiar with Pecto County, yeah. and I would have a hard time even telling somebody from the apartment here. Yeah, to get I there, think so. now, I don't know. I, I wish I knew for for sure. It's either exit twenty six or twenty seven. Okay, and GPS will get you there. Yeah, Thorburn. If you take the exit that takes you to Thorburn. Yeah, yeah. And it's literally like 
Shearbrook Road. Yeah, and just keep going. Keep going. If you think you might have passed it, you probably got to keep on going straight. Yeah. Because it's like 20 minutes on that straight road. And the, literally the only turn you make is to turn onto my dirt road. Oh, okay. And then you're there. Yeah. No, it's, not, it's not a bad drive, though. No, I, it's I, beautiful, I lived dude. in that area for a while. so There's it's... a spring on the way. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. one thing that my festivals, that I try for my festivals to do is uh, we're very, very much about making sure each individual attendee is not only having a good time but being taken care of sure yeah so i i will send my volunteers to the spring down the road and we'll load up like so much water and literally just walk around campsites and be like here you got water Here's perfect water. yeah yeah no that's something that's uh well back since like the the woodstock return there when we had to- the that 99? Big, yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. No. I, think, I think everyone worries about making sure that if they have a festival that people at least are hydrated at yeah. the very, very minimum. Yeah, so drinking water is free at Mayhem Man. Awesome. And so now what else would people expect if they uh, purchase a ticket for the event? Well, the fun thing about this one compared to my other festivals is Mount Funky was just music day and night, right? So Mayhem Mountain... The bands are all playing on Saturday. Okay. Friday, all the gear's there. Mm-hmm. Open mic. Cool. Jam style. A lot of awesome. musicians are going to be there because the, a bunch of bands are going to be there. And if you're an attendee and you're in a musician, fuck, jump up on the stage and play. Awesome. Big jam. Yeah. Night. And it's not just jamming either. We have uh, retro video game tournaments with prizes happening. Cool. And we've been voting out the games that are going to be played. So, so far on the list of games to be competed at is uh, Mario or Mario Kart 64. Cool. Perfect Dark on 64. Yeah. And Duck Hunt with, with the Zap gun there you on go. Rego Nintendo. And like the prizes are like smokables and edibles and stuff like that. Cool. And uh, also Friday night we're having a, what we're calling the old school horror movie night. So again, we're, re- we're voting on the event page of VHS classic horror movies that we're going to watch in the yard on a projector. Oh, well, that's awesome! I did see something about the yeah. the horror. That that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna that, be super fun. That'd be right up the alley for a lot of people that aren't right. e- aren't even necessarily there for the music because right. I know there's a, there's a huge group of people out there now that are into like classic horror films. Right, so. I, I'm a huge fan of horror, and uh, yeah, there's a few other little activities going on on Saturday morning before the music starts. There's a magic tea party, cool, being hosted by a clown. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, everyone's encouraged that wants to attend the tea party to come dress as their favorite Wonderland creature. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, a costume tea party. Yeah, yeah, like a little Alice in Wonderland uh, kind of And I haven't announced it yet, so this will be an exclusive announcement. Awesome. But also on Saturday morning, there's a pet cemetery on the grounds of uh, Mayhem Mountain. Oh, yeah. So on Saturday morning, we're having a wake and bake in the pet cemetery. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, is there facilities on site for people to stay? Is there like camping? Yeah, included? it's yeah. Uh, camping and parking included. With okay, ticket. perfect. So, it's a good uh, weekend for people that want to get out and oh, catch yeah. those bands and keep themselves occupied. Yeah, and, and we just uh, announced our food vendor. Yes. Which is hilarious because the the food vendor's name is Wood Wong's Chinese Buffet. Oh, okay. But they're not serving anything Chinese at all. Oh, really? That, that's the point, I guess. That's funny. Yeah, their logo they're using is the Chinese, uh, what is it? Oh, not socialism. What is it? Oh, man, I'm so lost uh, in words right now. The, like, it's a symbol that they use. Yeah, like, for uh, communism. Yeah. It's the Chinese Communist Party symbol. That's the logo he's using for his food vendor. So where are they out of there? Are they a Pictou County out of, based? Um, they're out of Pictou County. Uh, okay. McClellan's Mountain. Oh, really? Okay. Kind of out towards my way. Yeah, yeah. He'd be passing his place before he passed mine. Okay. So we, we definitely have uh, a rising scene of some uh, counterculture yeah. going on in Pictou County as well. It's, it's like the 90s is coming back, bro. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've noticed that a common thread with a lot of the recent guests is that there's definitely... 90s is the new retro. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It totally it's, is. It's pretty amazing to see all played out i don't know whether to be like super pumped about it or feel really old about it i'd uh, just be pumped about it <laughs> just just go ahead and let your mind drift and pretend that it is back then yeah yeah yeah. you'll be fine dude i do that all the time man i 
I found these uh, clips online that you can watch TV shows from the 90s. Yeah. But they've recorded it off the TV, so the commercials from the 90s are in there too. Yes, I've done some deep dives on YouTube looking for stuff after I saw some of those things. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it can be a little bit of a time suck if you get caught up doing it, but it's the 20s amazing. Is the new 90s, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if people want to get tickets to your event, what's the best way for people to look for that? So you can contact me <clears throat> online. Or, or by phone, I'll throw my phone number out there. It's 902-922-3375. Me or my uh, partners can meet for pickup for hard copy tickets. Yep. There's also uh, information on our event page for buying tickets through e-transfer. Yeah, and the event page is on Facebook. It sure is. Yep. It's just called Mayhem Mountain 2023. And we'll put a link in the description for this yeah, episode as well. Dope. And also, I just sent a bunch of tickets to the bands. Oh, okay. That's how I'm paying the bands. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so if one of the bands, oh man, I totally forgot about Novachoke. Oh, we're wow. Asking yeah. About bands. Yeah, Novachoke's like the second heaviest band we got. I actually, I'll, I have to look after the interview here. I got a pile of uh, promotional material sitting over in the corner, and I think I have a poster with them on it yeah. there from a couple of years ago. I don't know. Maybe you were associated with that somewhat. Well, no, no, this is the first time I've ever. Okay, them, really. Yeah. Perfect. So but, good stacked lineup. And if anybody knows any of those bands yeah, or the, they hangs around tickets. the shows that they're playing now, because a lot of them are doing quite a few gigs, yeah. so they have tickets and it's so a good you, way to if support you go both. To Mayhem Mountain, yeah, you support the band, the band and Mayhem. Why not playing a show near you? Hit them up for tickets. Perfect. And as we wrap up the interview with you here today, we'll just uh, reiterate, what weekend is this? It's the last weekend of July. Perfect. 28th, 29th. So we can, uh, Pictou County metalheads can all uh, get together and catch a good show at the end of July. Yes, and then sir. we can all regroup again the uh, end of August, first week in September for Bikes Festival, yeah. too. And there is some bands that are playing on both lineups. Yeah, so uh, I'm pretty <clears throat> excited to see that there's going to be a little bit of a fan base built up around Pictou County for these acts. It hasn't been like official, but like I applied for Mike Fest. Yeah. As a, a fire spinner. Oh, okay. Because I spin fire, too. Yeah, yeah. So they're already booked for music. So I was like, oh, I know you're booked for music, but, like, I spin fire. And... I Would I have seen you do that around here before, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, I that's where I recognize you then, for sure. Yeah. When, you, when you came in, I'm like, I know I've seen him before, but this was the first time we actually yeah. met. So If you see me around town, I'm either the guy spinning a staff or blowing a didgeridoo. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. should be pretty easy to pick you up. Sometimes I'm carrying Chris. Yeah, Chris yeah. is definitely a standout character for sure. It's so funny, man. I always, I've always was considered my own character. Yes. People would remember me, right? Yeah. And as soon as Chris was made, I knew. I'm just like, I'm going to be forever in the shadow of this tree thing. Yeah. And it, that's how it is, dude. I'll go to a festival. And it used to be when I went to a festival, someone would point across the way at me and yell my name. Yeah. But now it's... Oh my God, Chris Tree. And they're like this close to me before they realize, oh, Aaron, it's you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Does Chris have his own social he has media his account? own Facebook. Oh, there you go. You can, you can add Chris Tree yourself and be his friend. Awesome. I, I definitely advise that everyone do that too. So very excited to hear that this festival is happening. I hope you have a good turnout so that we can see more of them in the future. Yeah. And at some point, we're going to have to hook up you and uh, Mr. Hatfield. I feel like uh, yeah. the two of you would really be able to get something cooking between yeah. you. Yeah, that'd you, be awesome. You definitely have an overlap in contacts and you have a similar history. So Yeah, dude. I'd be excited we've to probably, make we've some introductions. We've probably met. Yeah, We'd yeah. probably be in the same mosh pits back in the day. Oh, guaranteed. Guaranteed. We'll have to go see if anyone has any archival footage. Right, that dude. Up. That'd be so I great. know it was a different era, but I mean, somebody had to have something that they VHS saved somewhere. VHS tapes, man. Yeah. I know for sure that I've watched VHS tapes of me playing shows in the Trenton Youth Center. Yeah. This so it's just a matter of like, who has that tape and does it still exist? So if anyone listening to this has any of those tapes yes. from back in the Pictou County days. Oh my God. I, I give you free tickets. Oh, there you go. The offer's out there. I'm sure I could get that offer boosted too with a few other people that'd be interested right? in seeing the same footage. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me. We'll brother. definitely be catching uh, those bands in the future and catching your festival this summer. So uh, wish you all the best and uh, hopefully we can have you back on for an update on other yeah, things dude. going on in your world. Yeah, I got lots of, lots of things to talk about, honestly. Great. 
Next up on East Coast DNA's Power Hour, Evan Frizzle of Turbo. Welcome to East Coast DNA's Power Hour. So our guest today is from Turbo. So uh, actually, one thing that probably not many people watching the podcast are aware of, I had to take a picture because I can't show it. The back of the laptop that I'm recording on actually has a turbo sticker on it. Oh, excellent. That's yeah, I don't I don't great. know if you can. Yeah, you can see that there. Yeah, I can see it. It's, it's buried under Lizney Meisner and June Body and George Woodhouse. But nice. So I, I had to get Quite you on eventually. You have. Yeah, yeah. And Tara Spencer's on there too. So you're the only band of that collection of stickers that had not already been a guest of the show. So, so thank you. Thank you for your time. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. So uh, now there's cursing on our episodes. I don't normally curse a lot in the episodes myself, but I think that this episode might end up being a little bit of an exception. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that sticker that I have there is for the album cover for Fast as Fuck. Yeah. And I noticed that uh, a lot of your social handles are tur- Turbo AF. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because this specific interview in the episode that people are watching right now is paired with an interview from Aaron Hayden, who insists to go by Aaron M. F. Hayden. So okay, <laughs> lots lots of f bombs all around this episode. That's for sure. Excellent. So uh, yeah, the reason I reached out to you now, like I said, uh, I was already aware of the band, and yeah. I think I met some of you. Um, is it the Church of Destruction? Yeah, it yeah, would have been. Yeah, I think I met some of you there one night. Yeah. And that's probably when I picked up the sticker, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it probably is. Time, timing wise, it makes yeah. sense. Perfect. Yeah. So you guys are both on the Mayhem Mountain Festival lineup coming up in July. Yeah. Which is why we interviewed Aaron about the festival because he's running that. But our first uh, return to this Power Hour format, we had an interview with Mike Hatfield from Mike Fest on Labor Day weekend, and you're on yeah. that lineup as well. Yes, we are. So you're doing a little uh, double duty in Pecto County? Yeah. And have you guys played here before? Like, is this new a new region for you? Uh, we played a skate park show in Pecto. Oh, yes, just not long ago, the opening at yeah. the... Yes, we mentioned that... Uh, on the bomb solid interview because we were talking about ashley george a lot and he was right a big name right. from that park so there you go so you have you have a little bit of exposure here now but now you're you're going to be a regular recurring band in the county it sounds like oh well, we'll see but i you know here's open right so people that don't already know of turbo i mean given the album title people might already have a little bit of an inkling uh the logo itself definitely gives a kind of mid 80s to mid 90s metal feel as far as the stylized logo and the the coloring and everything you get in i'm a big fan of the logos so you, yeah you i'm a real that big one. fan of that logo too it turned out fucking awesome yeah was that designed by somebody in the band or did i did it? like a rough design of it it was really rough though it was like a lot more jagged looking yeah and it looked like it looked like too much like a metal logo so sure. we uh we got somebody else to like redo it for us and it turned into the logo you see today see now i'm i'm a fan of all the bands of the era and you can't see it but beside me i've got wall art from guns and roses appetite for destruction and metallica master of puppets but right Back in that era, my old man was the one that had those albums. So I didn't need to buy those. I'd, if I had to buy something, I'd end up buying maybe Megadeth, definitely Anthrax. I was yeah. definitely into Anthrax in the time. So I definitely relate that era to yeah. Anthrax and that kind of sound. And I feel like you guys kind of fit loosely into that category. Yeah. So is it more of a kind of a thrash metal sound that you're going for? I we don't really know. We call it nitro rock. There you go. Yeah. And so like we always kind of like try and write with that in mind, that like little kind of like word descriptor. And I don't know, we try not to fit into any subgenre. Of course we probably do, 
but yeah. like we try not to as best we can we try to make something that's like authentically ours mm -hmm. which is like it's really hard to do when you come up with like 14 different riffs and they're all good but you can't use any of them because they don't sound like your band yeah 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 that's fair do, do you guys how many members are there in the band there's four there's four of you. So has it always been the same four members? Yeah. Um, actually, no. We had a bass player change. Okay. It used to be Todd Stanley, and now it's Henry McDonald. Okay. And yeah. how long have you guys been a band? I know that album is just probably a year old now. Yeah. So we've been a band for around like two years, almost two years. Okay. Yeah. So from the outside, as somebody that is constantly looking for new bands, I did not peg you as a new band really? I, I've, I saw you out there but i just i think probably because of the bands that you indirectly associate with or the people that you're around right. like the church of destruction or yeah the, the venues that you're playing the lineups that you're playing with it's a lot of bands that are established players in the scene yeah so well, you, do you guys you know, come like from that what's that do you guys all come from that scene in the first place yes like we all kind of like come at this with a certain realm of experience already behind us three of us were in like some pretty heavy hitting halifax bands okay. so we have those contacts anyway so we've been using those with turbo and it's worked out really well perfect so yeah. who else is in the band just um it's clear. myself uh lindsey dix is on lead guitar, then Henry McDonald on bass, and Sylvain Coderre on drums. So I think I met three or four of you that night that I was up there. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I definitely ran into you back then. That's definitely where the sticker came from. Yeah, sure, that is so. the place to run into us. We're always haunting that place. So is that album? That's all of your recordings that you have out there available for people to listen to right now. Yes, we have some like bootleg demos floating around for like the second album and stuff, but nothing concrete. Cool. Um, but the second album shouldn't be too long underway now. Like we're almost done writing it, and then it's only a matter of time before we record it. Perfect. That's something yeah. to look forward to for sure. Mm. And I know uh, we were looking for you there a few months ago i helped mike hatfield put together a official playlist for mike fest so there's a spotify playlist that you guys are on with the rest of the bands there cool so i i definitely was digging around there a few months ago and like i said it's it, the album was probably fairly new by the time I, when they received the sticker from you guys and slapped it on this laptop here so yeah it's it's been a little while i've been aware of you but where do you guys most like you're based in the HRM area? So it, is yeah. that commonly where you play or have you been able to um, expand? Yeah, that? like we commonly play HRM. We also try and go out of town as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So like Fredericton and Moncton are like top stops for us. We go to PEI whenever we can. Okay. Uh, we're trying to get out to Newfoundland, but that's like cut. There's kind of a trick to that. It takes some doing. Yes, a lot of a lot of travel time. I mean, expense sure, but there's expense everywhere. But the the travel time would be really yeah, a lot to factor in there. It really takes some doing to get some get to the island there. But yeah, no, we try and play wherever we can. We went to Montreal once already. Cool. Yeah, so you're making good traction right out of the gate. Yeah, yeah, that was the plan with this band from the get go. Is just like boom fast as fuck you just exactly you're just everything, leaning into the theme and letting everything it we do is just fast as fuck it's <laughs> awesome so coming up in july i mentioned you're going to be at the uh, mayhem mountain is there is there anything else in the meantime that people should keep an eye out for if they want to catch your set oh uh, let's see here check the i'm checking my phone here i got a list of shows because there yeah. is like an entire list right now. There's no way I could remember all these. That's things. awesome. And, and it's it, like the bringing back power hour. Originally we did an episode with uh, Ian from the bloody hell. Yeah. And then I did kind of a half hour rant, just talking about bands I could find online. Cause we were kind of still just coming out of lockdowns. Mm. The follow-up was actually a Newfoundland episode where we, oh, just yeah. did, we, we had uh the person that runs the heavy NFLD website. It's a fan site for 
loud music from newfoundland yeah so that guy actually is based out of montreal these days and has a band uh mist walker okay so that might be somebody if he's watching this or if any of those newfoundland bands are watching here's a band in nova scotia that wants to come play with you guys yeah no seriously something that's something to keep an eye out for and we'll slide it into your schedule there excellent yeah no well, let's see next weekend we're playing in moncton like this weekend coming okay um and then we got the blue mountain festival and then there's also lake fest and anaganish and bathurst on august 12th cool then see i'm gonna give some homework for myself i have to look that anaganish one up because that's but, yeah, it's it's gonna be fucking sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not that far of a drive from here, so yeah. I'm definitely gonna have to keep an eye on that. Well, what time of year is that one? Is that July or August? See, it is August fourth. Okay, yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and is I'll that also another me. metal lineup, or is that just a mixture? I don't of... think so. I think it's a mishmash of different genres. Okay, cool. Yeah. And your connection to the Picto Skate Park, is that through the other bands that we're playing? I think so. Yeah, because I know the Bomb Solids, as I said, they were just on this, but they're from Picto. Yeah. And they're definitely, they've been playing Gus's Pub and they Yeah, exactly. With... We, we've we actually played a couple of shows with them already. And yeah. Yeah, okay. some of my favorite guys to play shows with. It's an amazing the kind of sound it, that comes out of just a bass and drums. You know, it, it really is. It yeah. Really is. It's, what do you do in uh, Turbo yourself? Uh, I play lead guitar and I'm the singer. Yeah, I, I remember seeing you at the front, so I guess I kind of knew, but I wanted yeah. you to say it for anyone that's just listening to. So I'm the singer, guys. Yeah. You found me. Dude, kudos that you didn't just say I'm the lead. <laughs> I'm the lead. You could have just said I'm the lead. <laughs> so the rest of the guys in the band were they in other bands leading up to this because they're names yeah. that i know just from reading and being around the scene a little bit myself so oh yeah. uh, is there bands that were established that they've moved on from yeah we all had bands that were very established i, I was in blackmore uh sylvain is in hitman and okay. Lindsay's and Novichuk, all of which are still going, but they're yes. very much like they don't tour anymore, you know, like those bands yes. aren't trying to conquer the world anymore. And so we wanted to make a band that was trying to conquer the world. And that's why we made Turbo. Yeah. yeah I actually, I was talking to uh, Bryson not that long ago about Blackmore. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't from his era, my question. I found here in the Glasgow. Um, or at our value village. Okay. I was just randomly looking at some shirts, waiting for something one day, and there was a long sleeve, like the baseball style with the different color sleeves. Oh, those ones, yeah. Yeah, it was a black moor shirt with the yeah. like a knight riding the big mare. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I spotted that over there. So that's definitely a band that's been around for a little while. Oh, Blackmore's been around, yeah. 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 It's, that name pops up all the time. It's not somebody that I had seen perform live, but it seems like every few months I talked to somebody that was in Blackmore. Yeah. You know, like and it's funny, like once you're in Blackmore, you don't really leave. It's kind of yeah. like the mob. Yeah. <laughs> like you just get keep getting hired on and stuff. Yeah. And for the Turbo Project, you guys had the album out. You have lots of gigs. You obviously have lots of connections. You've already started exploring outside of Nova Scotia, which really is a hard thing for a lot of bands to do. So it, it's hard to get out of Nova Scotia. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's. I mean, I'm happy to keep all the bands trapped in the province with me, but <laughs> I realize for the bands to sustain themselves, they need to be able to explore a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And is there many bands that you're able to connect with in these other regions? Like, are you performing with locals when you go to the other regions? For the most part, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so, every now and again, you'll catch, like, another band who's also on the road and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's the local bands, yeah. So are we going to start getting some of them coming to HRM then play some of the local <laughs> Again, venues? if they can make it here, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's just as hard to make it in as it is to make out. That's true. And I mean, I don't want to say anything depreciating about my own county, but anyone from Pector County likes to hop on the ferry to head over. And it's been 
touch and go on whether or not you can get on the ferry. Yeah, seriously. So I, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm planning on heading up there to uh Somo Festival there in the week. Oh, ago. cool. So nice. Hopefully, hopefully I can hop on the ferry, but if not, I'll have to suck it up and drive all the way around. Jeez, yeah. So it's yeah, not the end of the world, but it, it's, like, that it's painful suck. when you know the alternative. Yeah, exactly. When the alternative is just like a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's very 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 painful but we'll get through it yeah and your album now you had a full album instead of an ep which is great from my point of view as a fan but i also have to speak from somebody that's been interviewing tons of bands over the last couple of years it's unusual because a lot of bands are now in this digital age of a single every two or three months and once you get yeah. two or three singles out you put out an ep you market the ep decide whether or not you're doing physical media but you guys did do uh physical media you have i see on Bandcamp that you can buy the cd with the digital album yeah so was that a conscious choice like did you guys form this band with a plan in mind that way or it's just that you're like-minded, so it was able to move fast. I think it was more the second one. I think yeah. we're like-minded, so it was able to move faster. Um, and we jam literally all the time. We jam twice a week. Mm -hmm. So it like gives us all the time we need to really like work proficiently with each other. And we record all ourselves. We did it all. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's so we cool. don't have to mess with any studio time or like there's no money involved. It's just we can come into the jam room, press play, and just go. So, and a lot of the bands, not all of the bands, but a lot of the bands, especially the heavier bands in the Halifax area, seem to have shared jam spaces with other bands. Yeah. So, you guys would be in that same boat. Yes. Yeah, we we share the jam space with Hitman and Warmier. So does the DIY is is that kind of strengthened by having other bands that are doing the same thing there? Not really cuz the recording setup is all ours. Okay. We we don't let anybody else touch that. We share a lot of gear in the room, but like yeah. that stuff is just like if anything goes missing or anything goes wrong yeah fine, yeah right so like we just don't we don't let anybody else toy with that really yeah no the boundaries are important with shared spaces that's, yes they that's really for are, sure. yeah. I, i'm fortunate enough that there's only like ever a 13 year old that has no interest in touching this that's comes around my podcast yeah. <laughs> so i've actually offered it to her i'd love for her to learn how to use it so i could just sit back and let her do the interviews but yeah it's not happening soon maybe a couple <laughs> years down the road and your sound going forward then, uh, you guys are being a newer band and where the album's just a year old, I imagine that the newer songs are in the same vein or have you been exploring anything a little different? Uh, it's very much in the same vein, but we've been trying to do things we haven't done before. Sure. Just like, you know, just like you always do. But it is very much still the nitro rock we've come up with before, for sure. And now I do have to ask for the album cover. I see that your background today is dinosaurs. I was going to comment on that because I didn't, this isn't my laptop. So I oh, didn't that's set this awesome. up. I just came in and there was already dinosaurs in the background. It's just a coincidence. And I was like, oh, awesome. I was probably going to set it up like that anyway. But yeah. Yeah. So the album cover is a dinosaur with a rocket pack? With a jet pack and scissors. Yeah. yeah. So who came up with that design? I did. Well, yeah. it was like me and Sylvain. And then again, I drew a rough draft mm -hmm. and then we sent it to our artwork guy. Okay. Uh, he does all our artwork for us. And he came up with something way better than me. It just looks like more cartoony and awesome, you know, like, yeah, like something you see out of the Ninja Turtles or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, I, 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 I recognized the image when I got the sticker already because yeah. I had seen it out there, but I wasn't, I still wasn't sure who Turbo was. But I'm right, like, yeah. Well, I definitely want something with that picture on it. So yeah. Like, what are these right now? It's a perfect album cover. I love it. It's a yeah. Velociraptor with the jetpack and scissors. And as soon as I said that, Sylvain was like, yes, that's the one. And yeah. 
And so it's not necessarily a reflection of anything uh, thematic on the album. It's just a matter of uh, showing something that looks kick ass. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly it. Yeah, there's not really any uh, subterfuge there. Awesome. So the I imagine the any follow ups you guys will be taking a similar approach where you'll brainstorm, sketch something out, and get something. We already out. have something cooking up. We have. Awesome. Like, as soon as we come up with an idea, we just tell our art guy, and he yeah. already he like within a day sends it to us because he gets so excited, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. I did notice too on Bandcamp you had a couple different T shirt designs, so you're using the same artist to help you out with the. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So music videos, did have you experimented with any of that yet? I, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, anything. we have two music videos. We okay. have one called Alive from the song on the first album, and it was done in Upper Clemens Park. Oh. And we climbed on top of an abandoned roller coaster, and we shot the whole video like with drums and guitars and everything up on the roller coaster. And it was terrifying. <laughs> it was so scary. And then we have another music video, which was done through quarantine. So it's called Make Bail. And uh, we had to shoot the video from our respective houses, like just on our phones and stuff like that. And then like mishmash it together as if like we were all part of the same unit the whole time. But we very much weren't like... Wow, yeah, it's a lot. I, I've experimented a little bit since I've been doing video editing and stuff with this, but I, yeah, something that complex I haven't really gotten too far into yet. I can only yeah. imagine the amount of time to, it's thinking and then the actual work effort to make it. It was happen. quite the production, it really was. Yeah, and do you your live shows have you recorded any of those yet? Or no, we no? haven't recorded a live show yet. Okay, um, so it's I think to... there's been a few recordings of us from like mm -hmm. other people yeah but we ourselves haven't recorded a live show we probably should that may be one of these uh upcoming shows over the summer yeah uh, maybe yeah yeah i like i haven't even really thought about that but it's a good idea yeah i, I think about it all the time because i and i'm one of those people that is doing some of the videos and then putting them on i'm one of those guys who are like yeah i guess i'm online somewhere i'm like yeah that was me was yeah yeah I, I do tell the bands. I, at first, I didn't. At first, it was more <laughs> experimenting. But over the last year or so, I always make sure I tag the bands. And That's usually good. usually a live recording now, I check with the band before I release it. Yeah. Because bands are not always the biggest fans of their own music. It's true. And you know, if you did something wrong on stage, you remember. Even yeah. Someone yeah. like myself, I, I might not have even noticed. Exactly. It's... It, uh... Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, it's just it's just a matter of you gotta keep looking cool on stage. And yeah. my job on this end is to make you look cool. So if you already look that way, I don't know if there's a problem. Yeah, I just, I don't I know just what keep to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of the other bands that were playing both Mayhem and Mike Fest. I think Shadow of Everest was also playing both okay so you had mentioned some of the guys in the band with some of the other bands they'd be in um nova trucks playing at uh the mayhem festival i think are they yes i believe they are okay and a lot of these bands are going up to the gutter fest as well yeah so is there anything yourself i'm the, i'm asking you as a fan maybe more so than as a musician here I'm curious with your connections in that scene over the past few years and being in a band now yourself, is there something different this year that all of a sudden there seems to be a ton of heavy music festivals? Cause I there don't is. remember it. You know what? It's peculiar. I was actually thinking about this the other day where I was looking at the show list. I was like, there's a lot of festivals. <laughs> yeah. You know, like for some reason this year, everybody's like trying to dip their hand into that pot. Like, well, we're going to make a heavy music festival. It is going to be the best one this summer. And blah, 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 blah. You know, like, yeah, there is something peculiar about that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I haven't met anyone that really had a theory on exactly what that is. But it, it's, it seems like every other day I hear about a new festival with a heavy yeah. lineup. And it used to be you'd, maybe there'd be one in the east coast 
every couple years. Right. Yeah. And a bunch of people get pumped up, go, it wouldn't make enough money or it was too much effort and they wouldn't and it would just it collapse in on yeah, it. Just yeah. Just done. Yeah. And Halifax makes sense because of population size that there would be a scene. Yeah. And obviously anything like that kind of ends up falling into two or three different bars. So, I mean, you're in that right now, but you obviously were able to expand without too much effort because you've already been playing a couple other provinces. Yeah. And as we both just mentioned, there's a ton of opportunity for bands to get out there and play live right now. So I, I am curious if it's, is it the festival organizers are looking just for a big bite of the pie or is something changing with the audiences where there's a higher demand for that? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely something we're both going to have to keep an eye on. Yeah, no, it's something to think about for sure. Because, yeah. like, hopefully it's a trend and there's just another festival every day. That'd be great. Well, I do know that this morning I was up early and there's uh, some people doing house repairs across the street. They, they hired a crew. There's about half a dozen guys crawling all over the roof there this morning. Right. And it was new metal from about 7.30 this morning to like 2.30 this afternoon. Awesome. And I was just, actually, I said to my daughter, I said, I know most people are probably annoyed and they are probably over there thinking we're pissing people off, but yeah. I think I love this. It's Yeah. What's the best band in the world and why is it Limp Bizkit? You know? Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just funny that, uh, all the genres go through phases where they're super popular and then kind of not talked about or pushed aside and then have another rise again. Yeah. And we've always talked about like when the eighties was retro and then nineties became retro. And the last year I've seen a lot of stuff for like early two thousands with like tribute acts and especially if you're hanging around the marquee or the seahorse, there's been a lot of events there that are definitely yeah. in that yeah. theme and everything, but it does seem like there is something going on in the area. Anyway, I don't know if it continues on beyond the East coast. Uh, I'll have to reach out to some Montreal and Ontario folks in some future episodes, Yeah, but it does seem like there's a bigger appetite to throw the events I'm just not sure if the audiences are going to those. We'll have, we'll have to wait and see. Have you noticed your own audiences getting any bigger over the last while? Or uh, generally, yes, but like that's like the way it goes when you keep playing shows. You know, yeah, so sure. I don't know if it's just because we keep playing shows or if it's like some other kind of force at work. But yeah, yeah they, they have been getting bigger for sure. Well, there's there's something going on. So I've, yeah. I've been telling all of the bands that have been on these episodes, especially since I've been cramming a couple interviews together to make it a power hour. Yeah. Like in the future, when you're ready to promote some more stuff, the potential new album or some live dates or going into the fall, if you have a new slew of things you want to push, definitely reach out to us. I'll either, yeah, for sure. I can either read some stuff off, post it, or I'll have you guys back on, get some of the yeah. members in and have a longer talk about some new stuff absolutely but in the meantime for anyone that's watching this episode uh where can they follow turbo online if they want to keep up to date you can follow us on tiktok and instagram um and our facebook those are the best ways to get in touch with us as well and are uh, they all turbo af or uh turbo or turbo as fuck fuck with a v instead of a u okay um and we're also on youtube spotify apple music all of it so you know perfect it's never yeah. a shortage of turbo yeah it's awesome i'm loving it <laughs> so we'll put some links down in the bottom but also as a treat for listeners and viewers of the episode we tend to fade out with a song so okay. do you have anything from the fastest fuck album you'd like us to throw in here uh, throw in Silver Spoon. All right. Yeah. Is there anything you want to tell us about Silver Spoon or like uh, what it, the Not lyrics really. are? About it's just or... good song. Just good song. It's so, just good song. I, <laughs> I I love that as a reason. That's that's a perfect yeah. reason to throw something on. <laughs> so uh, everyone, stay tuned for a musical treat. 
check the description below and uh, go out and get your tickets to some of these shows, especially Mike Fest. I yeah, know, uh, we, we've uh, mentioned Mike Fest on every one of these Return to Power Hour episodes. So I'm not going to stop until every one of those tickets is sold. Perfect. We definitely want to get there. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me.